I'm Debbie Scrag. I am the Memory Service Manager across North Staffordshire for the Eves at Mario House and Lionbrook Centre at Bradwell Hospital. And I'm Emma Daniels, I'm a um, Memory Clinic Practitioner, I'm a non-medical prescriber and I work at um, Bradwell Hospital Memory Clinic. Myself and Emma are part of a big team of memory practitioners, OTs, psychology, medical staff, admin and our aim is to see people for an assessment and diagnosis of a dementia. Referrals may come to us from a GP or they may come from another care setting. We're a sensitive service, um, we follow guidelines and work with local commissioners about the pathway of our service. Um, we, we like to support people through the pathway of dementia and help people managing a diagnosis of a, a dementia going forward. So we, we can see lots of people in our local community and that might be you know in city areas, it might be out in a rural area, people may come in to us to see us, sometimes we might go out on a home visit, it's whatever's best for that person's needs. Um, we have a, we have lots of things going on in the memory services, we support carers, we've got a carers link and carer champions within the in the service. We have staff that have done dementia tier two training so that we're able to offer that training beyond our service and out into other care settings or even adapt that to support carers and our service users understanding of dementia as well. We have really good links with the community and other agencies that are out and about. We're so lucky in this area. We've got the Alzheimer's Society, we've got Approach, Vast, Beth Johnson Foundation. We work with um, the ambulance service, the police, GPs, lo lots of people that can come together and support people with dementia. And within our communities as well, we've got a dementia friendly community movement which is trying to raise people's awareness of, of dementia. Um, and so that's important to us as well that we, we send like key messages about dementia and we encourage people to come for an early diagnosis as well so that we can help and help look at treatments or, or look at staying well or referring the person in, in the right direction to, to stay well and pre prevent you know a deterioration where we can with dementia. When, when a person first comes into our service, usually the per first person they will see face to face will be a nurse who is a specially trained, dedicated nurse in dementia and they will do a full cognitive assessment with the person, they will explain the pathway of what will happen, what tests are likely to happen next. Um, they will also do some pre-counselling for dementia, so supporting that person in understanding what the pathway will be and at the point of a diagnosis delivery what they can expect to happen and after. They will also provide, they might provide written information that we've got in the, in the clinics that we can hand out. Treatment depends on the type of dementia that the person may have, the symptoms that that person is presenting with. We also look at lots of other options as, as well as to managing symptoms for that person that they may be experiencing. So we've, we've got other options to refer to occupational therapy if need, who can offer support and guidance. and some prompts sometimes that may be helpful in, in the person's home or to continue you know leading a no normal life in their everyday activities. So we see people over the age of 65 because that's how our service is commissioned. There is actually a service where neuropsychiatry would see people under the age of 65 so they see people with younger people with dementia um, and dementia yeah it's it's derogatory it's just something about getting older but Sometimes it isn't just about getting older, sometimes there's actually a diagnostic condition there that, that's not just about forgetting things because you're getting old. Um, so somebody might think, oh, I'm forgetting things. So kind of this sort of symptoms that people might have is kind of a short term memory issue. So for people who don't understand that's forgetting things. And it's not just forgetting things, just, you know, oh, I've forgotten 
what went into a room for or something like that. It tends to be a very immediate short term memory. So somebody may forget what they did yesterday, what they had for dinner yesterday, or they might forget that they've been out to the shops the day before. Um, if people can also tend to be asked the same question over again because their memory hasn't been able to retain that information. Um, they also may start to struggle with their activities of daily living, so they may struggle to um, go shopping, they may struggle to be able to deal with the money, they may struggle to recognise what money means, um, they may not be able to wash and dress themselves okay, they may have trouble um, putting the clothes on in the right order and um, they might have trouble with cooking again put it, putting things in the right order um, they might forget about things on the stove and they might burn things but we have to put all of this, these things into context just if they happen once then it's it's the one it could happen to any others once it's kind of a consistent repetitive picture that tends to happen we tend to expect for this service that there's at least a six month progression of a memory problem and it tends to deteriorate over a period of time sometimes it can be progressive and um, which tends to happen with alzheimer's disease progressive slowly over a period of time or it can be like quite a rapid like a step wise progression which isn't Alzheimer's that's another form of dementia so Alzheimer's disease is a slow progressive illness over time so um, it's it's like a bell shaped curve so it slowly it goes like that and then put somebody's there and then it deteriorates down like that um, and it's about the brain and what happens over time is what's called atrophy so in the brain, an atrophy is basically essentially it's shrinkage or we like to say the brain's a little bit smaller or our doctor refers to it as not as plump because that's a bit nicer rather than saying about, about shrinkage really. So that's tender in a very simple way that tends to be what happens. You can talk about plaques and tangles and things in the brain but that's a bit complicated and you know it's better just to say essentially what's happening simply in the brain because that's easier to understand. It is the most common form of dementia, yeah. yeah um, a lot of people confuse, they think dementia and Alzheimer's is different, but it isn't. Dementia is an umbrella term and Alzheimer's is the most common term, um, the most common one. We have lots of many, there are many, many different types of dementia. It's Alzheimer's is the most common one, yeah, but it is a form of dementia. We, we are in uh, North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare in this area. We, are, we do have some of the highest uh, diagnostic rates across the country. With their families and carers? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you do. I mean, um, in terms of gaining a history, family and carers, whether it's the friends or whoever it is that looks after this and makes influence them, that is extremely important because what can happen sometimes when people have a memory problem they're aware they might be forgetting things, but they actually, because it's happening to them, mm -hmm. they don't actually, and aren't actually aware of what is actually happening. So the people around them see some things that they don't. And also what happens with the memory problem is you don't always have insight into how your memory is affecting you and that the risks it may be placing you at. So it's really important when we get a good family history from the, the family. But also, in, in the opposite effect as well, it helps in terms of, you know, a diagnosis or not giving a diagnosis because the family obviously can say, well, no, if a doctor refers, they can say, no, there's no problems with any memory, you know. So, you know, essentially, conversely, it's either helps giving a diagnosis or it doesn't, you know. Yeah, I think if you, if you are worried or concerned or notice changes, I think in the first instance it's best talking to a GP who will make a referral to ourselves if needed. It's also important that other factors are ruled out that can sometimes affect memory um, along the way. It doesn't mean to say it's a dementia, there's lots of other reversible causes that could be happening for that person at that time. So that's why we say, you know, speak to the GP. But don't, you know, come, come forward and, and speak to us and, you know, come to our service. They have yeah. to have a, a, like a, a formal review. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they can't just turn up, yeah. no. Wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> be able to meet the demand. <laughs> yeah. An early diagnosis is, is important yeah. because we can look at a person's well-being, staying well, and where possible, if, if there are treatments available, we can get them started at the right time. Or maybe it is looking at preventing 
um, you know, further deterioration later on that uh, bad just staying well. A good diet, exercise, um, management sometimes of long term conditions with GPs and uh, medicine keeping, checks. Keeping your brain keeping, stimulated yeah. as well because if you don't keep your brain stimulated it's the phrase if you don't use it you'll lose it and also if your brain's not stimulated then it gets bored and then it switches off. So it might be that you haven't got a memory problem your brain's just bored because it's not been stimulated. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. I think that's kind of everything we need for that You're video. Really good. Yeah. Yeah.